out of the box or out of the wall, whatever you want to call it, we have. Don't make this one. Okay, good. Inferno 4K. So I could finally finish off this trilogy in 4K quality because there is no extended cut for this one, which is interesting because this is the shortest even theatrically. This clocks in at barely one hour. Or two hours. An hour and 22 minutes. So let's see if Inferno is worth burning over. Chase Lockie here with the Blue Futon reviewing Inferno. This is closing out the Dan Brown trilogy. Ron Howard has done all three movies. Tom Hanks has done all three movies. I think the same writer has done all three movies. Uh, screenplay David Kemp. Uh, screenplay... No. The first one was different. So David Kemp did two of the three and he finishes this one off. This one is basically Tom Hanks wakes up. He's in an Italian hospital. What the hell am I doing here? And now it's a cat and mouse chase from the World Health Organization. Random people that are organizations that are on oceans. You have the plague. You have Ben Foster. Literally a billionaire thinking he's going to kill everyone on the world. So I like this film. Okay, this is an interesting one. Uh, I already can tell you right now the critics didn't like this one. Neither did the audience score. However, this is a very different conclusion to the trilogy. This feels like the Angela Christie ones where Kenneth Branagh did, Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, and now those new one where it goes a completely different direction. This is kind of the same way of doing the Dante's Inferno path, which Ron Howard does a lot of messed up prosthetics, gore in this one, blood, which is interesting. And like I said, it is only two hours. And so the pacing, there's nothing wrong with the pacing. However, there is some interesting themes in this movie where I'm kind of questioning a lot of things after watching this film. So, 4K quality, fantastic, looks really good. You're going through Turkey, you're in Europe again. You're in Europe again. So, what what do I'm going to say? If you like the look of Da Vinci Code, if you like the look of Angels and Demons, you're going to like the look of Inferno. It looks fantastic. We're going through different caves, we're going through different catacombs, we're going through different ceiling tiles, we're going to see great new paintings, and we're going to figure out where this plague is at. So, this has a more diverse cast with Ben Foster. You have Felisa Jones. You have Tom Hanks. You have Omar Sy. You have Irfan Khan. A lot more people in this movie that you will recognize. So, all the acting is really good in this film. So, the story itself is one where I'm intrigued at. Because the first 20 minutes, I was like, whoa. We're going really hardcore in this Dante's Inferno. And I really enjoyed that. The first 20 minutes, it's either people going like, what the hell am I watching? Or I'm fascinated by how we are doing this. Because it's so different from the other two movies where we're kind of going in that fantasy realm of messed up shit in Dante's Inferno. So I truly enjoyed that one. And I thought the World Health Organization was going to be the bad guy in this movie. And so I was kind of like, ooh, buddy. But they're not. The World Health Organization is a corrupt motherfucking organization that needs to fucking just, just be wiped out. Yes. Or at least new leadership because look what happened to COVID. They're trying to protect China. It's corrupt. It's fucking corrupt. So, but with this movie itself, the whole premise is a billionaire is trying to say the world is overpopulated and we need to kill half the world. Why is it always these rich people that are saying this? You have the Bill Gates. Yeah, this character, if they're so worried about it, why aren't they dead? Why aren't they killing themselves for the good, greater good? They're not. Greta Thunberg, how dare you? How dare you? Okay, if the world's going to shit, kill yourself, okay? If you're truly thinking the world's overpopulated and you're one of the motherfuckers that think so, kill yourself. I mean, that might be really morbid of me, but if you're telling other people we're the problem and you need to die, you first, fam. You First, and yes, Ben Foster does commit suicide in this movie, but I think people don't realize, like, if that truly happened, would the world be better? I don't think so. Like, look at The Last of Us, even though I still haven't watched The Last of Us, and I learned that actress is non-binary, now she's bitching. Oh, I'm just complaining now. But it's very interesting with these plague movies, and I do think this one does a good job with the action and the overall set pieces. Um, 
Is it a little bit superficial? Sure. Is it a little bit Assassin's Creed on some levels? Sure. You know what I get that when you actually see one of the characters. Uh, is it uneven? Sure. Is it totally different with, you know, Tom Hanks' visions? Yes. Does it make sense why he's having these visions? No. But it's fun to watch. Is it a horrible movie? No. Is it a great movie? No. Is it something where I could rewatch though? Sure. But is it on the levels of Angels and Demons or The Da Vinci Code? Like I said, though, it looks great. Great people behind the camera, in front of the camera. Again, it's the writing with all three of them, which I don't know if that just means the Down and Brown books are overrated or just adaptation is just not good come come to the movies. But with this whole Plague one, I mean, I think it's just more of like you have these people saying, you're ruining the earth, you're ruining the earth, but what they are spouting will kill millions, yet they're not on the plank to be, I'll be the one to sacrifice myself. And that's where I kind of just get iffy with just it in general. So Inferno, we'll receive a 2.5 out of 5 of futons, which equals that 50%. Let's see the critics news course gave this one. So you have critics a 23%, which I think that's on par with Da Vinci Code. On score 36, though. They didn't like this one. 254 critics, 25,000 audience. Critic consensus. Sensibly frantic and altogether shallow, Inferno sends the Robert Wangden trilogy spiraling into a convoluted new low. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a sucker for these going around the world mysteries. I'm a sucker for it. 23, 50, 37. Chase off with the blue futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Well, no things Bluetooth Topia. You boop to think about a great day. I don't care about just today, tomorrow, month for now, week for now, year for now. I love every single freaking one of you. Yeah, I don't know if these movie reviews are that good, though. They just might suck. <laughs>